I'll manufacture 100 leg press at a time and 1,000 racks at a time. So I don't get the chance to do the bespoke bit. So when I look at some of the, the UK businesses or, or European businesses that are doing bespoke, I think, okay, with, with the primal DNA and, and what they're doing, we could make some really untouchable stuff. So that, that for me would be super exciting in the next 12, 24 months. Thank you so much for speaking to me. Now, I'm not sure if you remember me, but I used to hassle you probably about eight or nine years ago when I was working on a, another, another magazine and you were with Smart Tech Nutrition, right? Because I think we met at Body Power a couple of times. Yeah. You're now the founder and CEO of Primal Strength. What's the origin story? Can you give me a little bit of background about the idea for the brand, its origin, you know, your motivations and, and where it's all come from? Yeah, of course, Joe, of course. So um, long story short, I've been in the fitness industry for about 21 years. Um, back in 2015, I was part of Lady or Leisure Group. Smart Tech was one of uh, the brands I had in that group. And then we sold it out to a German retailer. Um, they wanted to, you know, continue to open fitness retail stores. And I'd sort of spent the previous few years closing down some of the fitness retail stores and growing the business online. And, and, uh, and we were having a ton of success with strength and the German retailer was more cardio focused. So I, I looked at the market and thought, okay, there's a couple of opportunities here. I can take all the marketing experience I've learned from Smart Tech, and you know, I'd worked with a couple of the big nutrition brands. Um, we'd sold a lot of nutrition brands through that retailer, and uh, their marketing was exceptional. So I, I'd learned quite a lot about sports nutrition marketing. I looked at strength and how quickly it was evolving on the gym floor, and you know. Even back in 2015, 2016, there was rows of treadmills not getting used and overcrowded strength areas. And you only had to look at sort of fantastic businesses like UP down in London. I know you, you'd done a transformation with Nick back in the day. And I looked at that model and thought, I could definitely take this mainstream. I could definitely transition the gym floor away from rows of unused cardio and, and you know make strength more inclusive and inviting. Um, and I just I thought there was a lot of vanilla UK strength brands, and that we could we could do something cool with Primal. So um, myself and Mark Bowring, Mark was one of the early founders of PhD Nutrition. We uh, we joined forces, um, and, and I launched Primal November twenty sixteen. It's one thing to identify a gap in the market, like you said, maybe a lot of vanilla bland brands there already. It's quite another thing to actually put it into practice. Can you talk a little bit about what that journey was like, getting the idea out of your head and then beginning to, to bring people along with you? Um, how did, you know, was that experience what you thought it was going to be? I'm really interested in just discovering what that sense of, oh my God, this is so much easier than I thought it was going to be, or oh my God, what are we doing here? Yeah. yeah. Look, I've got a ton of stories, but, you know, I, I think the, the hardest part was probably doing the business plan. So, you know, I had a very limited amount of cash. You know, it was it was self-funded. I was the biggest funder of the business. Um, and I had to select, you know, the right SKUs that were going to make an impact. Um, you know, I had to do all the branding. I had to buy the domain. I remember sitting with one of my friends in a, in a web office and saying, we were shouting out names. And this is how we were trying to come up with the name. We're thinking like Primo and different things. And um, he shouted out Primal. And I was like, that's the one. Primal strength, that's got to be it. And we went online and it was like a couple of thousand pounds to buy the domain name, the .com. And I'm like, ah, Jamie, this is too expensive. I'm not sure. Like, I can invest, you know, like, I think it was 1% of my starting fund, something like that. And uh, he said, You've, that's the name. You've got to do it. So so we did that, you know, built the brand. Um, it, it wasn't as hard as, like, if I look at Primal now, you know, a 20 million pound, UK business, probably one of the bigger strength companies in the UK. Um, we've been profitable from day one. All of the great stuff that we've managed to do, you know, a great team here in head office, etc. If I look back and think, you know, 120 products, convinced Phil Lerney to do my first shoot. Um, the day we put the website online, our first sale was a thousand pound half rack. You know, it all seems like that was really easy. It, it was a ton of stress, but, you know, I just had to jump in. I think... Joe, sometimes not knowing some of the hurdles ahead allow you to, you know, to go and take these adventures on. 
I'm absolutely convinced that if you knew what was ahead, most people would never do it in the first place, right? You've got yes. to have that passion. And I almost think a certain naivety yes. in a positive way, just because that, that you've got, anyone can have the self-belief, right? And everyone has got their you know billion pound business idea in their head, but hardly anyone ever does it. And I think you need to have that combination of passion and almost a little bit of naivety. So Stephen, let me kind of rephrase that question then. What was so much harder than you thought it was be, would be? Was there something that you thought that's not going to be a problem that was? And on the flip side, what did you think was going to be incredibly difficult, but actually was a walk in the park compared to how you'd built it up in your head? Yeah, sure. So what was harder was probably the detaching myself from the monetary side. So I, I come from a pretty poor background. I think sort of that story's pretty well known. So I kicked out of school at 15 and homeless at 16. Um, and I think like when you start getting money in your business, you can be overprotective with it. So where some entrepreneurs, and I've seen some great entrepreneurs where they will literally have everything on the line for 10 years and then they get their success. I, I had sort of organically grown this business 2 million, 3 million, 5 million turnover, always profitable. And then in the year where, where we turned over 5 million back into our 2019, the business was crying out for more stock. And I was really protective of having good cash flow in the bank. And it was the wrong decision. And, and that part was much harder. Separating sort of like, you know, how to run a business properly with your own emotions of, I finally got some cash that's okay. So that was probably the, the sort of the tough thing. Um, and it was quick, just quickly on that, Stephen, do you think that is a common issue? Do you think that's where a lot of people go wrong? They may be too protective of cash. They don't spend when they should. They can't invest. And ultimately, they begin to stagnate a little bit because you see so many small businesses fail, right? Why do you think that is? I, I think you're spot on. I think some people simply don't have the, you know, the appetite for the risk or sometimes the desire. I certainly had the work ethic. Our team had the work ethic. Everything was pushing to say, go and spend another million pounds in stock. And what I actually did is, is you know, late 2019, early 2020, I thought there's got to be a way for me to grow this business and, and have some support and, and some support with some of these answers. Because it was different when you, well, the previous business I ran, you know, the guys had been in business for 30 years. We had a collective. It was very easy to make a decision. They always had an outlet because they'd all retail stores and things like that. Um, that's when I started looking for, for support and, and hence taking on a private equity company because I wanted people that had grown other businesses to support my decisions. You know, I could design the kit. I could create amazing gyms. I was building great staff. Um, I, there was just, it was big milestone decisions that I wasn't at that point you know, necessarily comfortable with making. And when we brought in guys like, so um, Avatar Lobal, our chairman, he was one of the, the in, um, early investors in Grenade. And he'd, you know, helped Al and, and Juliet take that up to, you know, 70 million exit. So when I spoke to those guys, I thought, okay, they've been there. They, they've ran through some of the hurdles and, and challenges. Um, and that freed me up to be a better business owner and, and ultimately better CEO because the board made the decision, you know, you had a, you had a strategy and a collective look at it. And um, so that was probably one of the hardest things was detaching the, the, the sort of trying to be tight with cash, Scottish guy, if you will. I wasn't going to say a word. I mean, I'm so glad you said that before I had the chance. What about uh, just to get back to the question, what was easier? What, what was you, know, you mentioned on that first day doing a thousand pounds on a half rack? Yeah. It's not to say, the, the interest was there. There was a pent up demand for your products. Was that the thing above all that surprised you? Like, oh my God, that it's kind of flying out the door. Yeah, I think when you when you think of sort of Primal's success, that first year to go and win, you know, within our first year, we got a 100K gym. To go and win that business off established other UK fitness companies was a little bit easier than I expected. And I don't say that from a cocky way, because obviously, you know, there's some really amazing fitness companies in the UK and, and globally, obviously, but, you know, we were, I was going down and meeting gym owners and I understood their pain. I was a gym owner as well. I am a gym owner still, um, but I understood their pain. So, so to be able to sort of walk through a business plan with them, to be able to help them design their floor space and maximize that floor space. Um, you know, we were one of the early adopters of small group PT and creating, um, you know, 
the right layouts, the right zoning for gyms, that led to sales. And that was all a little bit easier than I, I imagined. And then the second part, it still surprises me to this day how many consumers will spend, you know, five figure sums online without speaking to you and have that trust in the primal brand to, you know, buy online at a large volume. So that's slightly, you know, I get the internet now is, is so much more advanced, but if if you think, if you really, if you, when you say it out loud and say, somebody's willing to spend X amount of money online, select a delivery box and trust you to turn up without even having a conversation. I want to go back to the to the, the gym um, success you've had, um, but first let's let's follow on with that. What it must still does it still surprise you then when you get an alert? I'm um, obviously you're too senior now, but there could be like a 30, 40 k order that's just come out of nowhere. It's someone seeing a home going, yep. I fancy a new gym. Like, why do you think they are coming to you for that without any kind of? There's no, I mean, there's not even a soft sell, let alone a hard sell, right? Yeah, They're literally yeah. discovering you and then and then spending tens of thousands of pounds. Why is that? I think there's a lot of trust in the primal brand. You know, we're well reviewed. Biomechanics, we're renowned for. Um, we're really, you know, we really are forward thinking on, on, on kit design. You know, I'm on version six of that half rack that was my first ever sale back in the day. Um, you know, we're now stainless. We've got um, integrated pulleys, incredible um, chin up options, loads of gadgets and storage that you can put into the racks. You know, convergent jammer arms and everything you can imagine so we're we're very innovative innovative um i think there's a lot more trust on e-commerce shopping now i think covid drove a lot of people to just have to trust the internet um i think we do our our case studies and gym designs on instagram pretty well so i think people can see um you know they can see what primal's doing whether it's a primal performance center at burnley or whether it's adam collard's new site sculpt or Obviously, Ryan's just won Mr. Olympia and we're, we've just fitted out a phenomenal facility for him. So I think there's a lot of trust in seeing these, the Stoltman brothers, their strength centre, you know, and in Regarden. I think there's a lot of people that look at that and say, okay, if the world's strongest man's trust in Primal t- to create his gym, we can trust them too. Um, I, I think it's it's it really comes down to putting your brand out there for everyone to see. And we were, you know, pretty early... I remember launching the brand and having back then a couple of thousand followers on Instagram before the website had gone live and thinking, this is a bit crazy. Like this is thousands of people seeing my brand before it launched. And, you know, we're not fast fashion, right? We're not, you you, you know, you're not giving an influencer a t-shirt and they're getting 10,000 unit sales. You know, if we work with an influencer or we work with athletes like the Stoltman brothers, um, there has to be a reason. Like we say strength is in us all, right? That's our motto. That's what we truly believe when you look at the likes of Tom's story, you know, it's a phenomenal story and it really ties in with Primal. So, you know, they truly become an ambassador and it's almost like we are supporting their journey. So there's a, there's a lot of, I think there's a lot of trust in Primal. Um, what surprised me is how quickly some of the big chains have came on board. Well, let me, let me get onto that because that's what I wanted to just to circle back to because in my experience of speaking to a lot of small or growing businesses, they'll be speaking to the big gym chains or whoever. And it's like, we love your staff. It's so much better than what we've got already. But we've been working with them for 5, 10, 20 years. We've got all these long-term relationships. Yes, we know that the, the clients will benefit from your stuff, but we just can't leave this relationship. Was that Does that resonate with you? Or was it a case of your stuff was just so good that they were ready to, to take it on board? No, that resonates massively. I mean, Primal's been at all the big events, whether it's, you know, the early days of Body Power of Old, the Arnold's, or out at FIBO. Um, we've just, uh, this month, shipped seven containers out to South Africa for Virgin Active. But that was a year and a half of meetings with the guys. You know, we met them two years ago at FIBO and then and then built up the relationship. And, you know, I can sit here confidently and say, you know, you go over to, I've been over to a number of their sites in South Africa. You see a premium brand like Techno Gym in there. And now Primal is going to sit alongside with some of our machines and some of the the grip strength stuff. Um, It's pretty phenomenal. But, you know, the likes of JD, there was a bit of an opportunity to supply them after another company um, had ceased trading with them. And we jumped in there and and now we've got Primal dumbbells and plates and all that good stuff in all their sites. 
Um, we've got another big chain coming on board in, in 2024. Um, so yeah, I think it's just once you've tried and tested with one chain, there's a bit more trust. Um, and I do think now all of the chains are looking at what the premium boutique studios are doing. They're looking at what the big independents are doing and making sure that they're staying on trend, if not developing trends. And when you look at the likes of a, a JD, you know, they've got a CrossFit partnership with a Lyco where they've got the bigger Lyco rig. They've got Primal in for all the dumbbells and, and now doing some studio stuff. And they really are like, they're very open to developing their sites. And I, and I think that, the market will just continue to go there. And as Primo continues to do the sort of top of funnel stuff and bringing more people into strength, you know, if you look at all our PR this year, there's there's so many articles and so many um, bits of press that we've done that talk about, you know, elderly people strength training and why the benefits of it are, are so important. And that's that's not just Primo talking about it. That's, you know, yourself, you know, you, you'll lead movements like that as well. Um, and I think if as a brand primal are working with a lot of different demographics it really does open up the market and then when a, when a chain is looking at you they're going yeah well actually i see primal with here 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 and here and and again it's back to that trust piece isn't it yeah exactly that and i think you mentioned as well kind of the biomechanical advantages that your your kit offers and how you've put that front and center of your offering when you were first speaking to the chains was that a competitive advantage but i'm trying to get a sense of whether or not there'd been a lot of established players but was there the feeling they're a bit stale? There's no real genuine innovation. Was that a vibe you were picking up? Especially on the sort of leg training kit, you know. So I think with, you know, the females are, are training a lot, a hell of a lot more, especially on, on leg kit, glute drives and everything like that, V squats, power squats. Um, and I think out with some of the really premium US and Canadian brands like Atlantis, some, you know, some phenomenal brands there, they either didn't offer a full turnkey solution in the UK, so it all looked a bit bitty, or um, it was cost prohibitive for large volume purchases because they're, you know, Primal's, we, we don't hide it, we're manufactured in Asia. The, the quality in Asia now is absolutely phenomenal. You know, we, lifetime frame warranties. They've got some of the biggest and best factories I've ever seen in my life. And I've been in, I've been everywhere from Life Fitness in Chicago through to, you know, just pretty much every factory in Taiwan and China. Um, as I say, I've been that's the last fifteen years I've been doing that. Um, so yeah, I, I think not only the innovative kit. We work with guys like Gavin Laird and Biomechanics, who are elite strength coaches, who really get those true points. And then if you put that in against a relatively ordinary off the shelf product, it doesn't just look like ten times better. It looks a hundred times better. You then put a nice brand behind that. You, you know, you have our primal story, the inclusivity with strength is in us all, our marketing, our solutions around flooring, lighting, zoning. It becomes a package that's very appealing. Where on the competitive landscape where you've, you've got those kind of, you know, the mass markets you just mentioned, where at the other end of the spectrum, I mean, someone like Watson making bespoke kit, where, where do you see your brand being? Are you trying to do, I guess, the best of both worlds, right? It's the mass market appeal, but with the functionality of high end equipment. Yeah. So, I mean, look, I think Simon does a cracking job with Watson's, you know, the bespoke finish, especially some of the, uh, you know, the clear coat finishes and some of the pad um, options he does, I think it looks incredible. Um, I think what we've really spent a ton of time over the last eight years doing is, you know, seven, eight years, is, is really working on the biomechanics to make them absolutely incredible. Um, and then, you know, where in the early years of Primal, I probably had to make to a price point. So that was, I was quite an aggressive price point. As the brand and the trust in the brand has grown, I can now truly make to make the perfect piece. And then the price really is the price. Um, and, and that's only been probably in the last 18 months where we've really developed this performance series that, you know, people can, there's plenty of gyms across the UK now where you'll see some Watson, some Atlantis, some Primal all sat next to each other. Um, and in terms of the color side of things and a bit more of the bespoke side of things, I think for us to, to really grow into that area, we probably look at an acquisition. Um, I, I think it's it's not something that you would want to try and manage with 13 factories across Asia. So, you know, 
we, we've got a really premium paint finish. It's black with a nice sparkle through it. Um, all urethane injection molded pads, which I think are actually some of the best in the industry in the last sort of couple of years and in the way that we've developed the, the new performance series pads. Um, so yeah, look, it, it's, it's, it's a great industry. There's a, a lot of space for all of the brands. I just think that we're kicking on with, I see, especially with, with sort of private equity backing and guys that have looked at uh, guys that have proven records and growing global brands, you know, I'm getting that sort of help and, and even just Joe when you recruit, right? So if I take our, um, CFO, he came from another big private equity backed business. I'm not a hundred percent certain we would have managed to get somebody of that caliber without the private equity backing. You, you think then our head of content came from one of the biggest um, social media agencies in Scotland. Again, we're bringing in that caliber of person because we have that, you know, board structure and infrastructure of, of, of senior people. So just, you know, it, it's not just a small Scottish fitness company anymore, or even, you know, I, I'm, you know, a, a small to medium sized UK fitness company. We really are. Um, we've got some big plans over the next couple of years. I want to get to those plans and the pros and cons of, of working with private equity and some of the other growth targets you've got. But Stephen, just before we move on to that, one of the common complaints that I, when I speak to to, to people in, in the gym chains, is like the, the, the big firms, the big uh, equipment providers tend to give us what they want to make rather than what we and the punters need. Yeah. How much of your strategic strategy or your direction is based on what the gyms are telling you like we need more stuff like this or can you innovate like this is it i guess i'm trying to get a sense is it more collaborative relationship with your clients to provide the the type of kit that the gym floors need 100 percent, and i think that's why we're we're we sort of ran past a lot of these other companies so quickly you know we are constantly speaking to those independent gym owners and, and those guys and girls are sharp you know they are looking at the best kit in the us they're looking at the best kit everywhere um as am i so i'm all over the world i'm, I'm i go to i'm away every single month i i'm obsessed with kit and brands and, and what's happening in the market so you know it, there, there's not a the, the, probably 20 weeks of the year i'm away looking at different innovations and different things and then the, the nice thing about primal i can you know, myself and Gavin, for example, or, you know, Ewan, who's my sales director, who's properly into kit, we can discuss a product. We can have that prototype done within three, four weeks. We, um, in fact, we got, this is a prime example. We got a request from a large gym chain in the States last year for Primal to make them a product. Within six weeks in their paint color, I had that product on the doorstep, you know? So it's that feedback from independence, feedback from gym chains as well because some of the chains are coming up with some excellent stuff um and then being quick to market not sitting and it doesn't have to go through you know 15 departments and wait for finance to sign off and then you know it's um we can be pretty reactive and and, and, and proactive i usually ask people around this time of year to look into the crystal ball what are going to be the trends but i don't you don't need to look in a crystal ball because you know because you're speaking to people what what are, what are gyms asking for what are the big the, the big leaps forward in terms of kit or specific type of training equipment or things that aren't there already what what can we expect to see moving forward there's still a massive massive growth in, in, in the leg training area you know we've got 10 new machines launching in february three of four of them sorry are leg machines so there's still a you know every single way to hit your teardrop or engage your your glutes more um we are working on refining a few more of our chest pieces especially there's definitely plate loaded back in back in vogue I, I think it went through this sort of big crossfit movement um, a couple of years ago i think a lot of gyms were focusing training that way and i think as more of the sort of hybrid spaces have opened up there's been a bit more of this the crossover between uh functional and, and, and plate loaded um obviously hyrox is is um it's big on everybody's lips at the moment. We just did Hyrox is equipment in the UAE. So we did all the sleds and weights and everything for the big Dubai event over in um, Dubai, obviously a few months back. And we're doing another big one with them in, in January. Um, accessory wise, there's, you know, I think the interesting thing with social media is it's allowed a lot more small accessory companies to look at developing, you know, 
add-on products, whether it's you know banana handles for for back rows or, or different things like that. So I'm always looking and thinking, okay, how can we tweak and improve that? How how does that really um, you know? Let's say when you're, when you're looking at a row and you're thinking of the levers, how does that ensure that you're, you're keeping your arm in the correct motion plane? Um, and what can we do there? Because what you can't do with big kit sometimes is add on, you know, uh, adjustable handle. It's going to be footery for somebody that's deconditioned and it's their first day in the gym, especially when you're talking to a big chain because they just don't want that. They want a fixed solid handle that's going to move. Um, so you, so you're, you are, even as a strength brand that, that, you know, is known for machines, you're looking at these accessory products and saying, okay, how can I make that work? And, and I actually think what you'll see in, in 24 and onwards is the real true diehards that are looking to get the apps, take their physique to the absolute top level, will be bringing some of these accessories into, you know, into facilities to use. Um, so yeah, we're, we're, Really pushing on with that. The other big area that we're developing is is modular racks, and I know that doesn't sound overly fancy, but you know, Primo's always been renowned for being leading with the racks, and um, some of the modular stuff we're doing, whether it's you know how we connect them with storage back to back, you know, um, how we tie them into some of the machines we have, or how we tie you know cables into the machines, and yeah, that's um, Fibo in April twenty four. You'll see new rack system, some of these new machines I'm talking about, um, a new power space. So we're, we've got some, um, we've moved into a little bit of hit cardio. It's, it's not a huge focus for Primal, but um, we, we have a, a really, really sound and, and nice um, hit bike. We're doing a power ski and a power roar to, to align with those. Um, and we're launching that in April at Feeble. So yeah, some, some exciting stuff coming up. So, and on that note, you know, you've been you've grown incredibly quickly since 2016 with PE backing. I mean, you're not going to do things slowly, right? You're not going yeah. to slow down. If anything, it's just going to get faster. You mentioned cardio there, Stephen. Is the goal? Well, you tell me. What is the goal? Is it a one-stop shop where people can come to you for the complete fit out? Tell me what the next one, three, five years looks like from your point of view now. Yeah. So, I mean, we've we've been doing full turnkey solution for sites for. Not from day one, but you know, certainly the last couple of years at a performance level and to a really high class level. Um, cardio is an interesting one. I've always said um, tech leads cardio, and you know, to play in the tech field, you need a far bigger budget than Primal has. Um, so, what, so what we did is we went out and, and we worked with a, a t- one of the biggest, if not the biggest, Taiwanese manufacturer on some really solid cardio that's been proven in the US market, um, and and you know, it's now branded Primal. Um, we'll probably stay at that level on the traditional cardio. Um, I see the, the tech side is, you know, we have an entertainment screen, but to, to really, when you see what the likes of a Life Fitness and, and some of the bigger brands are doing on cardio tech, it's, it's tens of millions, if not hundreds of millions of investment. So we, we'll stick with the sort of best in class, heavy duty, functional hit stuff. You know, the roars, the skis, the hit bike, um, we've got the power sled now. As I say, we've got a couple of um, power based products to move into the hit side with as well. But I don't, I don't see in our sort of twelve to twenty four months that I would naturally move into focusing on how I can make the best treadmill because it's just not, it's not really what we do. Um, is this something where, you, obviously, with the with the funds you've got available to you, is this where acquisitions could potentially be of interest? Uh, and what would that acquisition strategy be? Is it going to be purely opportunistic, just to just basically keeping an eye out and see what's around, or is it much more structured than that? No, it's pretty structured. Um, you know, we, we've 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 had a good look at the UK and European market, and I think there's, you know, there's a come couple- on, give me the scoop. Yeah, <laughs> a couple of really interesting businesses. There's there's some. There's some businesses out there that are doing some really nice stuff, um, and and could have some phenomenal synergies with Primal, um, and I also really like some of the bespoke stuff that's out there in the market. That's why I'm a big fan of Simon's because I, I look at some of the stuff that 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 he makes, and and I think you know not not and I'm not saying that anybody can make machines right, but forget the machines or the brand mechanics or any of that stuff, right? It's it's that look and feel, and because I, you know, I'll manufacture a hundred leg presses at a time and a thousand racks at a time, so I don't get the chance to do the bespoke. But 
So when I look at some of the, the UK businesses or, or European businesses that are doing bespoke, I think, okay, with, with the primal DNA and, and what they're doing, we could make some really untouchable stuff. So that, that for me would be super exciting in the next 12, 24 months. Is that, it sounds as though it's almost, there's a bit of an internal battle within you, Stephen, that you you have to run the business, but at the same time, it's there's the passion there, right? Sure. And you see, you see those things, it's like, well, how can I get that in? Do you sometimes have that inner conversation? Like, I would love to do that, but that's not right for the business. And how do you kind of, how do you, how do you solve that conundrum? You, you do what's right for the business. You do what's right for the business. So it would be very easy for me now with, with you know, Primal doing as well as it's doing. November was a record month, both for, you know, uh, gym installations, new business, everything like that, um, international. It really was a phenomenal, phenomenal month. But um, if I either made a machine because I thought that was the right way to make a machine or, you know, I derailed my merchandising team to go and do a couple of bespoke products, it just wouldn't work. You know, you wouldn't be able to scale it to the right, you know, the right size. Even the new work we're doing with, we've got all full program to, for our new bumper plates. Um, they're actually on the water just now, but, you know, even just changing over from the old style of bumper to the new, the amount of work that goes into that, because we have, you know, multiple million pounds of working orders that, you know, some of them will have been secured 12 months ago that you're then having to change into the latest variation. So it's not just as simple as, right, oh yeah, I think that's a really good change I can make to that machine. Or a cu- we, we do have customers, I mean, we, we supply, or some of them are under NDA, so I can't say who they are, but we supply some of the top athletes in the world. And I mean, like, top, they would be on the top 10 list of, of global athletes. You know, and when you're doing their home gym, of course you would want to go and make a couple of things bespoke for them because that would just be phenomenal. But they trust us, I think, because actually what we do make in volume is, you know, is superb. So that's the uh, that's the that's the hardest bit. And when I see all these, like, you know, I don't know how much you, you follow it, Joe, but like some of the guys that do the garage stuff out of woods on Instagram, right? And I'm quite obsessed with all this stuff. So I'm looking at them all and I'm thinking, man, that guy's having fun. Now, I don't know what his life's like and I don't know how successful he is, but man, he's having fun, right? Exactly. <laughs> you mentioned, obviously, it's going to be an incredibly aggressive and exciting period of growth. But you mentioned that US client, you're able to turn around all in six weeks. The sign of any growth, the bigger you get, you're going to have to sacrifice that ability to be nimble, right? And things are going to have to slow down. Is or that you, a concern, or you, can you see a way through that? Can you can you do both things essentially? You know that that's really just making sure we've got the right people in the team. So you know, somebody looking at that new innovation side and and being able to to really support us. So as I say, we use a couple of external guys like Gavin, but we've got staff over in Asia as well. Um, I'm a bit of a workaholic, so you know, at five a.m. if I'm coming up with an idea, you know. My kids are asleep at school, um, or they're asleep at night time, and I can I can I can do that. Um, as we grow, for sure, I, I think that could be a limiting factor. But ultimately, there's a ton of there's a ton of really good fitness people in in the UK actually, as well as you know the US and Europe. So it's just about primal, you know, bringing those people into the team. We've got a couple of new starts starting in in January and February that. You know they're big hitters in the industry, um, and they're joining because they see where Primal's going. So you mentioned that, that you know four a.m., five a.m. getting the idea. You know, CEO, founder, CEOs that they can be amazing to work with, or they can be an absolute nightmare, right? Because you're wanting to tweak, <laughs> wanting to change, a new idea comes into your head. What if you're being totally honest? And you know, I can't ask your staff this, so I have to take your word for it. But what are you like to work with, and do you have to kind of? temper some of your ideas because the most important thing now i guess is your people and bringing them along with you you're spot on joe you're absolutely spot on um i would have said for the first five years it was very much run with me guys let's all run at 100 miles an hour just run with me and we'll get there and we did right you know you know primal went from two million its first year to 12 and a half million its fourth year always profitable and you know now we're continuing to grow from there um and that's still relatively small numbers because the fitness market is actually still relatively small but for a for a glasgow based self-funded company it's it's i'm pretty happy with our growth um 
in terms of what how my staff view me now, I think I've relaxed a little bit. I don't think I've lost any competitive edge. I think I've just got better people in the right areas. You know, we've got a, a, a nice top level board structure. We've got some great senior staff. As I say, we're pretty aggressive on on hiring good staff and or consultants. Um, I think they would still say he would WhatsApp me at the wrong time of the morning or night if an idea or something that he's really passionate about comes into his head. But I, I probably wouldn't ever want to lose that because I think that gives you the spark. But then I guess that becomes part of your job is to make sure that people are bought into that, right? So it's you're bringing them with them and they understand where it's coming from. And ultimately, if they've, if they've bought into it, they can see... The, the light at the end of the tunnel, right? Because yep. private equity at some point are going to exit. There's going to be a payday, hopefully. And this is where all those long hours and all those early morning WhatsApp messages are well worth it. Is, 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 that, exactly, is that kind of how you brought them along? Exactly that, Joe. So, so to give you an idea, um, you know, I, I started the business back in 2016. Uh, my sister was a sales manager for, a, for another fitness company. I couldn't afford to bring it in. So I said, look, if I give you a little bit of equity, will you take a pay cut to join me? And, and, you know, her and I have, have ran the business now, as I say, seven, eight years. Um, in 2021, we did the private equity deal. I gave five of the original team sweet equity in the business as a reward for getting us to that sort of stage, which, you know, it, it was very much a stage of saying, look, we've taken it this far, knowing what we know. How far can we take this once we put you know, a more experienced senior team in and, and, and to help us grow. Um, so th th those original five will be rewarded and, and, and hopefully we get a great outturn for them. Um, but we're also giving a ton of people some great opportunities. You know, we've got people that have started this year, they've done the sports science degree, they're, they're interested in fitness, but they're not sure where to go. And they've come in in marketing, they've come in in sales and you know, they, I've got an open door policy here, so they're coming in and asking me a question and they're getting 20 years worth of fitness experience. So, you know, financially for them just now, yeah, they'll, they'll be doing they'll be doing well, but the life experience they're getting in terms of growing with a private equity backed fitness company and somebody as passionate about fitness as I am in terms of growing primal, I think that's worth more than a, a monthly salary. So I think we're giving it to, to the staff in both ways. What's the most exciting thing for you? Is it the fact that, as you mentioned, the market is still relatively small? Like you've barely scratched the surface. Yeah. Is, is, is that the most exciting, interesting thing for you? Is like we're doing really, really well, but we have the, the, the runway is so long here. It really is. I mean, as I say, the, the international expansion side has only been really in the last 18, 24 months. So that's sort of just starting out. Um, but when you look at the UK market now, I mean, you, you've trained for probably as long as I have. And if you look at, I think we mentioned UP earlier on, but if you look at what that gym was 10, 15 years ago, right? Or if you look at, you know, a Muscle Works in London or some of these old school sites where they had true strength pioneers either running them or, or, or training out of them, that was like one or two in a certain space. Now there's one or two in a main street, you know? And and, and what the budget gyms are doing and what the, the, the sort of low-cost entry gyms are doing is they're creating an even bigger market. So they're the, they're the sort of top of funnel, if you will, for then the boutiques and the independents. So those guys then are, are, you know, creating people that love training, get more passionate about it. Okay, what's the next stage of gym to try? What's the next class to try? Um, I mean... Look at High Rocks as a prime example, as I mentioned earlier on. 8,000 people competing at a fitness event that is, okay, yeah, there's eight cardio sessions in it, but there's a lot of strength and functional work in that as well. Um, so I think it's I think it's an open runway for Primal, both in the UK and, and uh, internationally. We started with a quick chat about body power. It seems like a nice place to end because there's two brands that, you and I would have both seen on the very early days of body power in Gymshark and Grenade, right? Which I don't think anyone really saw the the potential of either of those two brands, but they have exploded. Do you see Primal as being able to follow in that footsteps as the next great big British success story? I think Gymshark is, is simply phenomenal what Ben and, and that senior team did 
um, and are doing. Um, I think for a fitness company selling hardware, it'd be hard to get to that level. I think when you look at Grenade and what Alan Juliet did and, and their team, I think that's probably slightly more achievable, albeit now with Mondelez and, and you know, it, they, they've really gone. I mean, they are, there's not a petrol station you walk into. And I always remember, so Alan, I was one of Alan's first customers back when we had the retail stores and he would say to me, you know, Stephen will have grenade everywhere one day. And when he launched the protein bar, I remember speaking to him and him saying, look, I'll have this in Marks and Spencer's one day. I mean, that was, you took the words out of my mouth. It's yeah. the first time I saw it in an M&S. I was like, they've crossed over. That They've, they've done it. A hundred percent. And But he had that vision, right? And, and you know, again, the people that have known me, you know, whether when I worked for, for Johnson Health Tech, which is the sort of matrix group of brands uh, back in 2007, 2008, and, you know, they'll have said, oh, good sales guy or a bit cocky or whatever, right? But when you, when you, when you start to build something, and you truly believe in it and you've got a brand like Primal, I don't see why it wouldn't be in every gym in the next five years. And and if, I think if we get to that stage, why would it not have sit alongside the likes of a Techno Gym, a Life Fitness, which are the equivalents of the grenades, I suppose, at this stage? Um, you know, so yeah, that's the, that's the aim. And, and, you know, we're having fun along the way and, and we're building a good team along the way and... Um, I still love it as much as the first day I started, right? So as long as you've got that passion and your team have got that passion, then... I don't even need to ask you questions because that could be my final question. If you, if you could do it all again, would you do it? Obviously, the answer is yes. Is there anything that stands out as I'd have done that differently? Any kind of fork in the road moment where you think probably should have taken the other road or are you pretty happy if you look back in analysis where, with making the right calls often enough? I probably wouldn't have done some of the more entry-level like commercial stuff. Because I think as much as I thought gym buyers were, you know, um, able to, to decipher the difference between a sort of light commercial or home product versus our, our performance series or, or what was our monster series back in the day, um, I think some people wanted the primal brand that, and, and would buy the home product for their gym. And I think that that could, you know, that tarnished us a little bit where somebody would go, oh, I'm not 100% certain about that product when actually it was just the wrong fit for the wrong environment. So it would have been perfect in a home, but not for a 2,000 member gym. So I think that helped us grow in terms of it was a really accessible price point. But I think that, I think I could have probably have just done it with home and full commercial and not had that middle bit. And that's one of the one of the big things that we, we've changed in the last 12 to 18 months that's really helped. So that's probably the only thing I look back on. I think as well, I'll maybe look back on and think, why was I sitting with more cash than stock why did i not just take the risk but maybe i wasn't ready to right like you know you don't know what you don't know all i can do now is is put primal in the you know um put primal in the right places build the right team to execute the the orders we win make sure the strategy is absolutely nailed for the next couple of years try and have some fun along the way um i'm not obsessed with being like you know i've designed this product i must you know get a design patent and, and do all this, you know, generally just trying to make people stronger and fitter. And, and, you know, that's what, that's honestly what, when I was 15 and playing rugby and I wanted to get stronger, there wasn't the access to all the strength stuff that there is now. And I enjoy being one of the guys that's providing these, uh, you know, whether it's the youth of today or whether it's, it's the elderly people with kit that they can go and train on and, and become stronger and fitter. So. And as you say, it's, it's even with the budget change, they're having to up their game because it's so competitive and also because of, of the client demands. People, yeah. the average person knows so much more about health and fitness. They're, they're not going to go to a facility that doesn't have the best kit because yeah. they do have power where they're putting their money. And I think that's probably another huge opportunity for you is that there is just this pent up demand for higher quality products yeah. and, and you're perfectly placed to do it. Stephen, it's been an absolute pleasure to speak to you. Thank you so much for your, your honesty. And I really look forward to see what happens over the next you know one two three five years thanks joe and look hopefully we'll see you at the arnold's or something and i can reminisce about some of those old smart tech days yeah absolutely days. Well, i'm looking forward to going and seeing ryan's facility i've seen a couple of the yeah. pictures and it's absolutely phenomenal and i spoke to him last week we had a great conversation about olympia and again he was really honest in some of the low moments because everyone sees the highs everyone sees him on stage 
not many people kind of know what happened when he didn't play, so he, he really, really struggled. And I think his is a story that even if you're not into bodybuilding or even if you're not into fitness, you can take something away from that resilience and that ability to not stop. I think there's life lessons in there for all of us, so yeah, uh, yeah. you've been in touch with it. He, he's, he's a phenomenal, phenomenal guy, um, and I, I spent a good bit of time with him at his Gymshark bodybuilding event because we had a primal gym there. Uh, his story's phenomenal. It, you know, it, it really ties in with our with our brand mission as well, and um, he, he's not spared any expense in creating honestly what is one of the very best facilities in the UK. So if you can get in there, you know, as as famous as Ryan is, any good coverage for for a site like that, I think actually improves the whole UK scene because I think people will travel internationally to to come and train with him and 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 see his facility. But yeah. 